Although she was only 11 years old, Carrie Hintermeister loved to teach. On March 24, 1984, Carrie and her friends were playing school, as they often did in their quiet suburban neighborhood. Carrie was the teacher, and also playing with the girls that day was Bradford Gill and his daughters. Gill, 27 years of age at the time, was a Sunday school teacher and the father of four young children. He was pretending to be the principal. Carrie needed a chalkboard and told her friends she was going to go to the, quote, principal's office to get one. She never came back. When Carrie did not return, the community began an extensive search for her. Leading the search was one of the most trusted members of the community, Bradford Gill. The search lasted a day and a half until authorities checked Bradford Gill's garage. There they found the body of Carrie Hintermeister stuffed underneath a white workbench. Carrie had been stabbed twice, once in the heart and once in the stomach. Her throat had been slit and she was covered in blood. Smears taken from Carrie's body revealed the presence of sperm. Radford Gill was arrested and charged with the murder of Carrie Hintermeister. Gill likely figured a jury would see right through him and sentence him to death. He opted to be tried by a three-judge panel consisting of Butler County Common Pleas judges John R. Moser, Henry J. Brewer, and William R. Stitzinger. Facing certain conviction, Gill decided to skip a trial and plead guilty to aggravated murder. Prosecutors believe Gill leered Carrie into the garage to rape her and then killed her when she resisted. Gill said differently. He testified that when Carrie came into the garage, she was laughing and joking with him and, for some unknown reason, grabbed a penknife. Gill stated they were playing around and wrestling again for some unknown reason when he grabbed her from behind and felt her body go lifeless. Gill insinuated Carrie had accidentally stabbed herself. He said he laid Carrie on the floor and could hear air escaping but could not find the pulse. Gildan stabbed her again and slit her throat. He stated, quote, I felt sorrow and fear. I don't know why, but I felt anger too. A young life was gone. I then inflicted the other wounds on her, unquote. Gil could not explain why he stabbed Carrie a second time and slit her throat. He also could not answer why there was sperm found in her body or why he searched for Carrie knowing her mutilated body was in his garage. According to Gill, and also a clinical psychologist hired by the defense, he suffered, quote, from a form of traumatic amnesia after the murder and could not remember anything. Most people believed that Gill would be sentenced to the electric chair for killing and sexually assaulting Carrie Hintermeister. Prior to sentencing, Gill portrayed himself as a model citizen who liked to help others. Gill received support from people who told the judges about his quote, saintly behavior in which he was always helping people in need, unquote. Unbelievably, the three-judge panel bought it all and handed Gill the lightest possible sentence, life with parole eligibility after 20 years. The judges claimed Gill committed, quote, an impulsive, spontaneous act, unquote, and stated that Gill's horrific crime was a, quote, monetary aberration of behavior which was otherwise explanatory unquote the judges also cited that gill had personality disorders and while he knew right from wrong he lacked the ability to obey the law they did not explain why no one noticed his mental problems for the previous 27 years although gill was not convicted of sexually assaulting carrie in 1997 the butler county prosecutor's office went to court to have gill adjudicated a sexual predator Although they had the coroner's report, which clearly indicates the presence of sperm in Carrie's body, Judge John Moser ruled Gill not to be a sexual predator. The Butler County Prosecutor's Office made a second attempt to have Gill ruled a sexual predator in 2007 after Gill's own daughter came forward and said Gill had molested her as a child. Once again, the court refused to label Gill a sexual predator. This means if Gill is released, the community where he resides will receive no notification to inform them of what he did to carry Hintermeister.
pretty quiet neighborhood here. So right up ahead is the house where her body was discovered. And uh, me just looking at it, it looks the same. I always wonder when people that live in these houses know what happened. I'm sure they do. That's the garage right there. And uh, going up this street right here, this would be the street where Carrie was playing that day with her friends. I wonder if anybody that lived there, lives here then, is still here. Yeah, this story really shook up the whole uh, city of Hamilton because that type of thing never ever happens and um especially in a neighborhood like this it's off of a busy road right there but it's very quiet here and a, a true uh travesty of justice this scumbag who is up for parole again in october of 2027 so every time he goes up for parole the family has to go there and explain to these people why he should be kept locked away. He's never, ever, ever, ever getting out. Never, ever. As far as I'm concerned, he should have been executed. So this house right here, this is the house where Carrie used to live. So we're going to take a ride about 10, 12 miles up the road. Go visit the final resting place of Carrie Hintermeister. <laughs> 